back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Anna, also known as Ehats Fit, and today I'm going to be sharing with you another 15 minute desk yoga flow. If you like these videos, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up because it really supports my channel, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below if you would like to see more content from me in the future. Today we're going to be going through a standing flow, but don't worry, you don't need any equipment or a mat, and you don't have to worry about what you're wearing. All you need is yourself and 15 minutes. I hope these 15 minute flows are helping you guys to get a little bit of movement and a little bit of a break between your work days. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so when you're ready, just take a step back from your desk, maybe push your chair in, stand behind your desk, get comfortable. We're gonna start off into Dasana Mountain Pose with five deep breaths. So make sure your feet are firmly placed into the ground, toes are touching. If you want, you can have a little bit of space between your heels or you can have the heels together if that's comfortable. Make sure you're squeezing your shins and your thighs in towards the midline of the body. Roll your shoulders back, make sure you're not arching that lower back. And we're gonna start off with five deep breaths with the eyes closed if you'd like. So when you're ready, take your hands up with a deep inhale. Reach your hands at the top and bring them down to heart center on your next exhale. Four more like that, inhale up. Gentle hold, and exhale, thumbs to heart center. Three more, inhale up, exhale, last two, inhale up, reach your arms as high up as they go, extend the spine, and exhale, thumbs to heart center. And last one, inhale. And let it all out in one big sigh. And thumbs to heart center. Blink your eyes open. We're going to take our hands now and clasp them. Face your palms forward. Press them forward towards your screen. Try to overlap your thumbs and your pinkies with each other if you can. And with that, you're gonna take your arms up while making sure you're keeping the integrity in your back so without dumping into the lower spine. You're gonna take your hands up, face them towards the ceiling and stretch, stretch, stretch as far as you can go. And you're gonna release that while keeping your hands up towards the ceiling. Take your right hand to your left wrist, pull that left arm over and to the side to get a nice side bend here. Don't worry about which direction you're looking at, but try to lift your chest up slightly towards the ceiling. Just slightly. On your next inhale, bring it back up to center, and you're gonna switch your hands. So hold your right wrist with your left hand, pull it up, and then fold over to the left. Face your chest slightly up towards the ceiling. Inhale, come back to center. We'll do one more on each side. So pull your left wrist up with your right hand and bend over to the right. And come up to center. Other side, last one. Here we go. Pull it up towards the ceiling before painting the ceiling with your right hand towards the left. Don't forget to keep breathing. And on your next exhale, come back up. Beautiful. Now we're gonna take our hands behind our back and clasp them. You can step your feet out to hip distance apart. And you're gonna puff up your chest while bringing the knuckles of your hands down towards the floor. Get a little bit of a back bend here as well as a chest opener. Roll the shoulders back towards the wall behind you. And you can stay there, or if you want, you can take your hands up over your head and fold forward into a forward fold. Shake your head yes and no, just to remind your neck to relax here. Make sure you're hinging at the hips. If you want to put a generous bend in your knees, that's fine too. Just try to find some sense of relaxing here. You can 
shift left to right as I am. This feels quite nice. You can also tick-tock your knuckles, your hands, right to left to get a little bit of more opening in the shoulders. When you're ready, come back up, vertebra by vertebra, rolling the spine up gently, making sure the head is the last thing to come up. Find your neutral stance. Let go of your hands. We're going to get a little bit of a stretch on the deltoids next. So take your right hand across your chest in front of you. Make sure your shoulders remain parallel to the screen and fold it across your chest using your left hand to bring that arm closer in towards your chest. Get a nice stretch in the outer shoulders and the deltoids. And while you're standing, you want to just be aware of how you're standing. Are you placing equal amounts of weight in all four corners of your foot? I have a tendency to roll my weight outwards to the outsides of my feet. And because of this, my outer shins are actually quite weak. It's also a little bit dangerous because our outer ankles are weaker than our inner ankles. So relying on the outer edges of your feet it could result in a larger tendency to roll your ankles outwards, which we don't want. All right, unwind that, go to the other side. So make sure you are placing your weight evenly between the inner soles of your foot and the outer soles. Make sure those shin bones are still hugging in towards the midline and you're really activating through the legs, through the hips, through the glutes. Even though we're just stretching our upper body right now. Do two more breaths here. Inhale, and exhale through the nose, last one, inhale, and exhale. Now I'm going to turn around to face behind so you can see better, but don't worry about turning around yourself. So when you're ready, you can keep your legs hip distance apart. You're going to take both hands out to the side and extend them as far out as you can. Make sure you are keeping that lower back straight and that you're not going into an anterior pelvic tilt. You're going to take your right hand, extend it even more out towards the right, and then flip it and bring the back of your hand right in the middle of the upper back. Next, you're going to take the left hand out towards the side, flip it over, extend up towards the ceiling, and then bend at the elbow to try to meet your right fingertips to your left fingertips. You can adjust here to get a tighter grasp. And if your hands aren't able to reach here, you can be wherever you are. You can grab the back of your shirt and just get some resistance that way. You can grab a towel or a strap, though it's not necessary. You can just hang out here if you want. But if you are able to grab here, go as deeply as is comfortable for you. And the tendency here is going to be to arch the back to make more room for your arms. Try to resist that. So keep tucking that tailbone down straight under you. Draw your head backwards so that the backs of your ears are in line with your shoulder. Roll the right shoulder back. And internally rotate the left upper arm so that the left elbow is pointing directly up towards the ceiling. This is going to probably feel harder on your lower shoulder, so the right shoulder in this case. Don't forget to keep drawing that tailbone in. Keep drawing the neck back so you're not pitching your chin forward. Legs are still strong here. For another three, two, one. And unwind. Whew. Shake it out. We're going to do the other side. Extend both arms out to the side, and this time take your left arm out even further out to the left before flipping it and bringing the back of the left hand up towards the middle of the upper back. Then extend the right arm out to the side. Flip your palm upward. Paint the ceiling. Extend further up towards the ceiling before you bend that right elbow to meet the right hand to the left hand. Again, check in with your pelvis here. If you're in an anterior pelvic tilt, tip your pelvis back to neutral. 
Bring your navel to spine. Roll the left shoulder back. Internally rotate the right hand so that the right elbow is going directly up towards the ceiling. Checking in with your lower back and your pelvis. Keep rolling the left shoulder back, externally rotating that left arm and internally rotating the right arm. For another five, four, three, two, and one. Before you unwind, bring both hands up towards the ceiling. Shake it out up here, and drop your arms down. Beautiful. Now we're going to go into our hips. I'm going to face to the side so that you guys can see what I'm doing better, but you can feel free to face your desk. In fact, I think it'll be easier for you that way. We're going to start off with warrior one. So start with your feet in Tadasana. Again, make sure you're firming your legs in towards the midline, and step your left foot back about a foot or two behind you. Place the left foot back on a 45 degree angle. Both heels are on the ground. Here what's going to be important is to engage the left glutes and drive much of the movement from the left sit bone rather than from the right knee or from the right upper body. Don't worry too much about squaring your hips here, but just make sure you're drawing that left hamstring back behind you. When you're ready, we're going to, again, drive the movement from the left sit bone, shifting that left sit bone forward while bending into the right knee. You can go as deep as you'd like or as um, shallow as you'd like. And keep bending and driving with that left sit bone. The back leg is really the key here. And straighten it out. We're going to do that three more times. Bend, driving with the left sit bone. You should really start feeling this in the left psoas muscle up here. And on inhale, extend. Exhale, bend. And inhale, extend. You can widen your stance a little bit more if you'd like a little bit more stretch. And bend. Left leg is still strong. And last time, inhale, extend. Keeping that same leg distance, you're now going to place your hands on your hips and hinge forward at your hips. Both legs are still firm, still squeezing into the midline, in towards each other. And if you'd like, you can place your hands here on your desk for support. If you're able to, you can keep them on your hips. And if you'd like a deeper stretch, you can also place them down towards the floor here. For a nice pyramid pose. This is going to be a nice stretch for your right hamstring and also your right calf. Make sure you continue to engage both legs. Careful of overextending the right knee. Keep lifting the kneecap up towards your thigh, especially on the right leg. Lengthen the crown of your head out in front of you so that your spine is as long as possible. And if you want, you can take it down deeper. Nice. On the inhale, place your hands back on your hips. And bring yourself up. In one swift movement, we're going to step forward with the weight on our right leg and try to balance as you bring the left foot into your left hand for a half frog pose. So, this is going to be a deep stretch on your left quad. Make sure you're standing firm in the right leg. This is a balance challenge, but if you'd like, you can always place your right hand on the desk. And try to bring the left heel as close as possible to your left glutes. If possible, you can swivel your hand so that your fingertips are facing forward and your elbow is facing back. Try not to depend too much on a back bend here. Keep tipping the tailbone down directly below you to really maximize the stretch here in your left quad.
Nice. And without placing your leg down, you're going to just bring the left foot up to place the left ankle right over your right knee. Again, balance challenge here. And of course, again, you can place your hand on the desk if you'd like. But we're going to sit down into a figure four chair pose to get a nice stretch Woo! in the glutes here. Shift your sit bones backwards and the crown of your head forward, lengthen the spine, and if you can, you can bend forward into your left shin. You're firing up that right glute with the balance, and you are getting a nice deep stretch in the left glute from this figure four shape. Nice. And again, don't drop that left foot down but come up and gently place the left foot right by your right ankle for a low tree pose here. Catch your breath. And you're gonna come into prayer hands here for a nice and easy tree pose. One more breath. come out, we will do the other side. So once again, stand in Tadasana, feet are firm, shins and upper thighs are squeezing in towards the midline, and you're going to gently step the right foot back behind you at a 45 degree angle. Up to you, the distance you want to take between your two legs, but make sure in any case you're squeezing both thighs in towards the midline. You don't have to worry too much about keeping the hips square, but I don't want to see this. So your torso should be facing forward. Make sure again you're engaging that right leg so that the right hamstring is pushing back, back, back. And the outer sole of your right foot is pressing into the floor along with that right heel. As you inhale, lengthen the spine upwards. And as you exhale, drive the motion with the right sit bones moving forward into a bend in your left knee. Keep driving the right hamstring back. Don't let it sink down. On an inhale, press back up to extend the leg. And exhale, bend again. Inhale, straighten the leg. And exhale, drive it forward with the right sit bones. Inhale, extend. And exhale into warrior one. Last one, inhale, extend. And exhale, warrior one. Keep pressing up and back with that right hamstring. You should be getting a nice deep stretch here in the right psoas. All right. On your next inhale, extend the leg, keep your hands on your hips, and gently hinge forward from the hips into pyramid pose. Again, you can place your hands on your desk. You can keep them here on your hips, or if you are able to, you can also bring them down to the floor. But make sure in any case, both of your legs are supercharged and engaged. Both knees should be lifting up and both thighs are hugging in towards your midline. Sit bones are pressing back towards the back of the room while the crown of your head is pressing forward in front of you. Nice. The balance challenge is gonna start now. So place your hands back on your hips if they're not there already and lift upwards. And without placing your right foot on the ground once, step forward to shift the weight onto your left leg and come into half frog pose. Make sure you're firmly standing on that left leg. The left kneecap is still lifted. And you're gonna bring the right heel in towards the right glute. If you can, swivel your hand around so that your fingertips are facing forward, elbow backwards. With this hand placement, you'll also be getting a good stretch in the right shoulder if you're able to. Make sure you're tipping 
the tailbone down towards the ground so you're not relying too much on the back bend. But if you're able to, draw the right knee slightly behind you to deepen that quad stretch. And without dropping the right foot onto the ground, bring it forward and place the right ankle onto your left thigh as you come into this figure four chair pose. You can have your hands on your desk for balance and stability. I have my hands on my knee and my foot, but try drawing the sit bones back behind you and the crown of the head forward. Take the arch out of the lower back by drawing your navel to spine and hold. If you can, you can pull a little bit deeper if you want more of a stretch in the right glute. Two more breaths. And again, don't drop that right foot down, but come up and gently place the right foot along your left ankle for a low tree pose. Press the foot into the ankle as much as the ankle is pressing back in towards the foot. And meet your hands in prayer pose, thumbs towards the sternum. Take three deep breaths here. Come on out of that tree pose. My memory card got full, but that is where we are closing our practice today. Thank you so much for flying with me today. And if you do like these short desk yoga flows, I know we went a little bit over time today, but don't forget to give me a big thumbs up because it really supports my channel. And hit the subscribe button down below along with the bell notification sign so you never miss a new upload from me again. Thank you so much for joining me again. I hope that you got a good mid-afternoon break and that you have a great rest of your day as well. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!